Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thanks so much for joining us live. And if you're watching this later, thanks for tuning in as well. I have a special guest today. This is her second time on my channel. And it's Karen Willis. Thank you so much for joining us, Karen. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. I really You are it. so welcome. Oh, darn it. Let me just turn this off right there. Uh, so Karen is, um, a, I might let her introduce herself, but she does past life regressions um, and the life between lives. Okay. Mm -hmm. You guys know, I'm always talking about this between our incarnations. We're up there with our soul family or whoever it is that we're meeting with. And we're designing the next life. We're literally saying, wow, I want to learn this. Can you come down with me and be my husband or my wife or my boss or my child and help me learn this? And I'll help you learn this. It's, it's all sort of mapped out for us. Karen's going to talk about that. She is a QHHT practitioner. She's also an author. She's been on my channel before. She wrote this book, which I love this book. You can see all of me. <laughs> I don't do this very often, you guys. Um, plus, my God, this thing is a workout. Like you're working your bicep. You're laying in bed and you're like getting a bicep workout. You're like, okay, I'm hey, going to get some, I'm some guns over here. Um, but this book is really cool for a couple of reasons. And then I swear I will let Karen talk. Um, first of all, I swear the energy of the, it has energy. Uh, it's about Jesus, but really it's about, well, she regresses people, right? She puts you in a hypnotic state and then you go to whatever life you need to go to, to work on whatever it is you want to work on. She has no control over where you go. She has no control over that. And she started seeing more and more people coming to her that had a lifetime with Jesus. Okay. So they went back to that life where they were in a scene or even a villager or a supporter or any number of connections. And so this book is not fiction, you guys. This is what these people encountered. This is their script of their actual reading verbatim, verbatim. This is what the people said in their hypnosis. So it's fascinating. All right, I'm done. Thank you so much, Karen. <laughs> Jump in anytime now. Well, I promise. thank you. Yes. Um, Yes, we choose our lives. And a lot of people will want to know, why would I choose this life? Or why would I choose this parent? Well, there's always a reason. And I give my experience, my personal experience. I had a, I have a narcissistic kind of mother, <laughs> basically, um, who really didn't know how to mother, right? So what it taught me was how not to be like that mother. Now, my sister chose the exact opposite was even more difficult with her child. Do you understand oh, no. that we had that choice? And um, she taught me compassion and forgiveness and to understand that some people are in kindergarten spiritually. And some people are just, you know, higher, a little higher. I hate to judge. It's not judgment. It's just a spiritual understanding. Um, so um, does that make sense? Everything. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And, and if uh -huh. you're in kindergarten, because I'm pretty sure that I slid into this life with a dirty diaper in kindergarten. So yeah. listen, if you're but, but if you're in kindergarten, you can you're not stuck oh, you anywhere. Okay, you're not yeah. stuck anywhere. Yeah. If you feel like you're in kindergarten and you're 70, you're not stuck. No one is yeah. stuck. We're the pilot of our own ship. So if we want to go, wow, okay, I'm ready to just do some deep diving here and figure out what my stuff is. Forget mom, forget sister. Let me see what's going on with me. Why am I reacting the way I am? And how can I learn to love myself more? And in that way, I'm probably going to be much more loving to everybody mm -hmm. around me. That's how you, that's how you ascend. That's how you go to a higher vibration, right? Um, right. I just wanted to make sure people know that. And it really isn't about judgment because our guides don't judge us. They love us unconditionally 1000%. Right. And I tell people like when I do forgiveness in the session, uh, to sometimes they have difficulty forgiving them from that lifetime for something they did. Maybe they murdered them or whatever. Um, forgiving someone else. Yeah. Forgiving someone okay. else. Right. 
So I tell people that forgive the soul of that person, not the personality. That's different, right? Our souls are pure, all knowing, all un understanding. That's like when we choose our family or our situation and we question it. I tell people when we when we're in the spirit world, we're all loving and and we have all the spiritual knowledge and they say, oh, I can do that. <laughs> and then we come here and we're like, what? <laughs> So, um, what did I so say I was makes... gonna do again? I forgot. <laughs> uh, what'd you say? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's it's very interesting. But I've done this enough to know that everybody kind of says the same thing about the contracts and the family, and even people who haven't read Michael Newton. You mentioned him before in in his books. Um, say the same thing and talk about the council, which you talked about before. We have a council um, and um, they inform and reform, but they do not judge. OK, so they um, try to reform. Let's put it that way. Not always can happen because it is up to the soul to move forward. OK, so um, I asked my subconscious wants, why people uh, have to go through past lives to release things. Didn't they release them in between? And they said it was up to the soul. So sometimes if souls hang on to certain things, just like they have patterns in life, they'll hold on to that. Yeah. Is there a question? Wow. I want to say, uh, feel better, Sharon. I didn't catch if you were uh, under the weather, but if you're still here, please know that I'm sending you seal, uh, healing energy and take good care of yourself. Um, and hey, Kevin. And yes, no, absolutely. There are some questions. You guys put questions in the chat. Um, we will try to answer those. Did I just see? Um, I don't know who I just saw in the chat. I thought I saw. Okay. Anyway, we'll try to get to your, your questions. If you have some questions about, has anybody had QHHT, you know, has anybody had QHHT? Can you tell uh, me the, the acronym again? Cause I get it. I get the two word, the two H's mixed up. It's quantum healing. healing hypnosis, hypnosis. Yeah. And it's not the same as uh, quantum healing. I think there's a quantum healing. This is, in, you're in hypnosis and I take people to two past lives and then I ask their higher self to come through. And before they come, they bring me questions that they want to ask the subconscious. So when you go into the subconscious, you have no ego, no personality, no emotion to the question. Okay. Right. It's a different feeling and I can't really explain it. It's something you have to experience. Um, I ask some people that come to me who are psychic if they've experienced the subconscious and they say, yes. But I think this is a deeper uh, or a more higher level, however you want to say it, um, level of awareness. Um, you can also go to the collective, you know, wherever <laughs> you go. I just follow. <laughs> so um, and I ask them to go to the highest level that they can go to, um, the highest level of awareness. Let's put it that way. Wow. Thank you, Denise, for getting that scammer. I do need to just say to you guys, there's new scammers now doing the WhatsApp thing. Don't send anybody any money. Don't. None of us on YouTube is going to give you a WhatsApp number. None of us, not one of us is going to reach out to you and say, call me or I want to meet with you or I want to offer you a reading. None of us go to our website. The only way you should ever interact with anybody these days is by going to our authentic website. Okay. Take really good care. Um, okay. So just for clarity. So a few of you guys in the chat said they have had QHHT. Uh, and even Lauren says she just enrolled in QHHT mm -hmm. level one, which is pretty exciting. Congratulations, Lauren. Um, yeah, sorry about that, Ruthie. They're they're back. The scammers are back. So you guys be really careful. Do you can constantly, let's see, can you, do you constantly revisit past lives and dreams to help with the present life? Um, do you yes. have anything? She says yes. 
You can revisit past lives in a dream. Yeah, a lot of people have past life experiences in dreams. The only thing about that is that I work on healing. And sometimes you need that other person to help you kind of heal. Some people can do that on their own, but I don't know if everyone can heal completely. I know when I had my first past life, um, I had fear of public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a fear of water. So he didn't complete it. Remember we talked about it, he didn't complete it. So I still had that fear. Even though I went through that past life experience, I had to work on it myself and say to myself, that's in the past. I no longer need to worry about that or be concerned with that. But it took me a few years. I mean, it wasn't like instantaneous. So, um, but with, with someone to guide you, um, after you do the past life regret, regression and go to the death experience and go to the spirit world, you, I take people to, to that life review and that's where you work on those issues. And you said and you that- You can they heal didn't. it and release it? Yes, anything you can release, but you have to be open and believe it, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I give people uh, recordings of it. It's very important because I hear some past life, unfortunately, past life, People don't give you a recording, but that's where you can listen to the healing part again if you need more healing. Yeah, I totally agree. And just for clarity, what she's saying is she went to a past life uh, therapist and she got the past life where, you know, she was afraid of water and afraid of public speaking and she found that past life. But some past life therapists don't take you all the way through to the healing part of it. They simply take you to the part. And, and this has happened to me personally, where they just take you to the part where you're like, oh, snap, this pattern has been existing through several lifetimes and is actively in my current life, but they don't help you heal it. They just, they're like, there it is, <laughs> you know? So she's making the point in case you missed it, that QHHT and maybe some other practitioners, but whoever you choose, you want to make sure that they're just not going to leave you with this problem because it's just like Karen said, you, now you have awareness that the problem has existed in past lives, but you don't know how to heal it. You know, you're, you're kind of stuck. And I, I'm seriously been in that position. So it's really nice that what Karen says is she takes you all the way through to the, if you're ready to heal it, if you're ready to let it go, she can help you do that because that's part of the QHHT which takes, well, how many hours? Four hours to do that? Well, if, if yeah, does well, hold. that's in the past life too. But in the quantum healing, I asked why those lives were chosen. And so for greater understanding. But I always do that because I'm not sure if people always go to the quantum healing or the subconscious. Most people do, but some people we were talking about block the information or, or not ready for it. If you're not ready for it, then the information won't come. They will only give you what you can just handle. Ask. They will only give you what just ask, do anybody resist? And what, what Karen is saying is you won't go into that deeper part mm -hmm. where the subconscious or do you, you call it the subconscious or what do you call it? Well, it's really like Casey said, super subconscious, really. But, you know, it's just words. I mean, it, it's the higher self. It's the yeah, right. true self whatever you right. want to call it. They're just right. words. I call um, it the higher self, but okay. So, um, right. Yeah. So some people look, Karen tries her best. She's a professional. She's done this many, many, many years, uh, professionally trained and certified, but sometimes people just can't get there. There's a few people in the comments that said I wasn't able to go under. Now this isn't a judgment. You guys, what mm -hmm. it really means is, is that there's a block there. You, you know, we were talking about it before we went live. Maybe you're afraid that in that past life you were, you did something bad, right? And you don't want to know that you you couldn't square that with who you are and you feel like that would be bad. Now, Karen, if doesn't, doesn't the soul have to be ready to get, get that information. So if the soul can't handle it, even if I'm like, Hey, I'm open, tell me anything. If the soul's like, no, Susan cannot handle this, then I don't get to see that life. Is that correct? That's right. 
And, okay. um, and it made sense to me, I'll tell you my experience from the book, if you haven't read, you've read the book, but um, where in my first past life experience when I was in training where I was with Jesus, I didn't know I was a healer. And I actually said I wasn't a healer. So when I went into the subconscious, this is like, what, 20 years later, <laughs> so much, I don't know, 15 years later, um, they said I was a healer. And then I asked, well, why didn't that come out in the beginning sessions? And they said, you weren't ready to hear it. Yeah. So, so you might, that's why the subconscious kept taking me back to that life of Jesus. Cause I was like, I've already been here. I know this lifetime, you know, why are you showing me this again? And that's what they said. You weren't ready to know that you were a group of healers, you know? So um, it's just like ETs. I, if you asked me 15 years ago, if I would have ETs, you know, I would like, no, no people from other planets. Yeah. People, I have quite a few people and like Dolores Cannon said, most of them were volunteers and they all came to help the planet. And so I had to be open. So when people come and say, you're going to think this is weird, I'm like, no, hey. No, no, me too. I'm like, I'm pretty sure not. So that's what happened to me. One of my lifetimes, I was an ET. And I'm uh -huh. telling you guys, I had the same problem. This is crazy. I had the same problem as an ET as I do in this lifetime. And I'm like, for the love of God. You know, I'm like, I can't, what is going on here? I switched species and I still carry in this baggage with me. But, but that regressionist didn't take me to the healing. So I'm like, now what do I do? Yeah, now right. I know I got the problem, but I don't know how to fix it. And I'm pretty sure if I go to a therapist, they're going to be like, what? What are you saying? You were, a, <laughs> you were an ET. Really? Okay. Here's some medication. You know, I'm pretty sure this, this is not going to be helpful for me. So um, that's very fascinating. I mean, I have questions, but also Linda J, have you, you've certainly heard of a walk-in, I'm sure. Have you heard of a walk-in? Yes. Walk yes. Okay. I'm not sure of that. I'm not, You're not sure I'm, that they really I'm happen? Not, I'm not really hundred percent sure, but I might be wrong. I don't know everything. I tell people, um, I just know what, what, you know, I, in my, from my work and my clients, what they tell me and my own, um, intuition kind of knowing, um, but I'm not a hundred percent sure of that, but you know, a lot of people believe that. Um, do you believe you're a walk-in? Me? Yeah. Um, I don't think so, but I, something, but, but I did have a conversation with my spirit guides a few days ago about that. Uh, so if you guys want to know what a walk-in is, so theoretically, uh, the soul, if the soul is under duress, the soul, and, and I think this happens more often with star seeds, people, uh, souls that are new to the human body, new to earth, it is incredibly, uh, hard for those new volunteer souls. They, they're allergic to everything. They don't understand anything. They don't understand this apparatus. The guides are calling this an apparatus. They don't understand the apparatus. They don't understand why is everybody killing each other? Why are you eating this weird food that's bad for you? Why is everybody so fixated on money? I mean, it's just like, it's a, it's a hard thing. So as a, a soul, you might get depressed. That's one way that you might do with it, deal with this. You might uh, reject, you might like become an outcast and go live in a cabin in the woods or under a bridge or something. But um, the other thing is your soul gets so despondent that the theory goes that the soul wants out and as sort of like an act of mercy, the soul is released and a new soul comes in to the same human body. Anyway, that's the theory behind a walk-in. Um, and um, I'm, I'm a little more convinced than you, but I'm not a hundred percent on it. Uh, so it's a pretty hard thing to um, prove, but I will say this, the, before I even know what a, knew what a walk-in was, I had a good friend who told me that when she was a little girl and she's not really into this stuff. And when she was a little girl, she felt like she was playing, she was lay, sitting on the floor playing with toys or something and something shook her. And she felt like, boom, she was 
a new a new version or uh she mm -hmm. changed and she didn't really understand what had happened she was asking me you know since i'm the psychic i'm like i don't know what happened to you girl <laughs> something bad happened to you <laughs> but you know i wonder if that is a walk-in you know i don't know but i'm open to it i'm not saying i'm close to we, it we we uh, do not you know, know. But, but i agree with you with the difficulty for the new volunteers coming down they have difficulty understanding this planet at all. I had one gentleman who um, actually, it was very interesting. He was um, going through it and he was like shaking. And he said, they didn't tell me that this, and he, he kept shaking and shaking. They didn't tell me it was this dense, this yeah. difficult. You Imagine. know, and he was like literally shaking his whole body. Uh, when he was felt he was coming down, he said they didn't tell me everything, and so he was like a little. Well, like, if they uh, did, none of us would come. <laughs> well, I mean, I take that back. We, our soul, yeah, once come here, our soul yeah. is a line. But when right. you get in the body, I, I just don't think anything can prepare you for no. the density of yeah. this place. If you've been yeah. a light body, if you've been a ball of light for eons, uh, this is a pretty stark. Uh, you know, place to be. And I, yeah. according to my Akashic records, I'm one of those people. I've been here like five lifetimes. So um, I'm just now getting the hang of it. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, very, very um, fascinating. I agree, little guy, nor uh, we're barely scraping the surface of what the soul is capable of. I totally agree with that. Yeah. That, and, the, and Yahshua, Jesus was saying the same thing. And all and most spiritual teachers say the same thing, right? I think that yeah. we don't oh, we don't use that. our full potential, and we can do anything and be anything. If it, A tremendous you know. uh, things we can do, and right. Tony, right? This is Shining Hawk, Tony. Uh, right. Um, to me, that's mm -hmm. a star seed. When when you're in this family nucleus and as a star seed, you're, you're kind of trying to blend in, but you just go left when they go right. I mean, you, you can't seem to fit, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So well, I mean, people, maybe you are a walk in, but definitely a star seed. But sometimes uh, people don't fit in. I didn't feel like I was part of my family. I felt like I was just dropped there. Um, That's <laughs> because awesome. I'm so different than everybody. And um, and my birthday's in June, and everybody else's was so far in in uh, December and everything. Oh, wow. So um, I just felt that it wasn't even as a kid. I was like, "When am I here with these people?" So, so have you had your Akashic records done? I mean, are you an old soul or are you a new uh, uh, an old Earth soul? You can be a star seed and be you know an old soul, but I feel like you're more galactic than. Are you an old soul? Well, well, let's explain what an old soul is. An old soul is someone that is more spiritually aware. Let's put it that way. Because a, a souls can live thousands and thousands yes. of time and never grow, right? Right. right? right. They might repeat that pattern forever and ever. So I've lived a long time, yes. <laughs> but have you lived, a, have you had a lot of earth incarnations would be my, yes. my question. Quite a few, yeah. So, mm -hmm. right. So then that's when I did trainings, you know, we would switch one would be a therapist, one would be um, the client. And so that was real intense. You've had a lot of readings. <laughs> I had a lot of lifetimes there. And I tell people I had some violent lifetimes too for not speaking my truth. A lot of uh, people are afraid to speak their truth because they've been killed for it in previous lives because, you know, women were. And men, you know, if you spoke your truth you, back then, it wasn't real happy ending most of the time. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, I tell people, you know, death is just a transition. It's not scary at all. And um, in one lifetime, I saw my body being burned, but my soul was observing. Right. Yeah. So your soul will leave when it can't. That's right. Know, either. It's not going to experience unpleasantness. Why would it? I don't well, even think it stays there when you're in a coma. Uh, if you have like some sort of memory, um, mm -hmm. like Alzheimer's or something like that, I mean, your soul's like, peace out, body. Uh, mm -hmm. Nice knowing you. Good luck. <laughs> you know, people don't understand the soul is different from the body. That's you know right. what I mean? 
but the body can still function even though the soul is gone. It's really bizarre, but that's how it works. It's almost like a zombie, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Which, which, which could leave an opening for a walk-in because if our soul is like, uh -huh. bye, see you later, and doesn't want to come back. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm open I to that. I, I haven't had any walk-ins, so I don't, you know, know. Time. Now you will. Now, now you will. Yeah. I'll probably you'll get, get a bunch of them. Yeah, now you'll get like twenty of them, and you'll be like, "Okay, okay, okay, okay I get it." Yeah, that's the way it works. Yes, isn't that's it? why they do that. That's you know, why they, they do that. Send, it's funny because sometimes I get people in bunches, just like Jesus. I mean, after that book, I haven't had any clients who had lifetimes with Jesus. So you just fulfilled that thing they needed you to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. um it's kind of interesting. Okay. It's it's fascinating. And Ruthie says, I've always been drawn to the 1700s, living in a cabin, et cetera. Could this be because of a past life there? I've always imagined this since I was a kid. Yes. Yes, yes. definitely. When you're drawn to a certain time frame or a certain um, area or certain people, that tells you a lot. Or certain music. I had this one woman that... Um, enjoyed uh arabic music now that's very different don't you think yeah well she was an uh, yeah she was an arabic well she was lebanese and killed in the war so uh, in her so. past life in her past life she was in afraid of, not in this life oh no no she yeah she was a, a white american girl whatever yeah um and i thought it was very unusual and then when we went to a past life she was lebanese and she was killed in the war and she was afraid of loud noises in this lifetime because she was bombed, right? So. They're all clues, you guys. If you're yeah. if you're drawn to Egypt for some reason, or you're afraid of sharks for some reason, and you live in Phoenix, Arizona, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, there's these are there's there's a connection here to a past yeah. life. Yeah, and if you can't explain it in this life, you know. Then usually yes. it is past That's life. a really good way to put it. Yeah, if you can't, because I usually ask them, did you have this problem in a past life or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. So you can, so theoretically, you could go get like a reading, the, like the way Karen does, and identify one of these problems, whatever, whichever one the soul's ready to work with, identify it, confront it, and release it, and move on from it. Right. Um, you could really do some major soul work by by enlisting a reading like this. Well, it's actually hypnosis, not a reading. You do read hypnosis. Sorry. Or a session. I'll call it a, a session. session. Yeah. So, yeah. And you have to be open to that. I I leave it open to the soul to choose. OK. Um, so if people come for a specific reason and they don't get it, it's there's a reason why. Do you see they needed something else that they might not realize they needed? But most of the time it does address it. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. I also want to say, um, so please explain to us that there's two versions of QHHT, quantum healing hypnosis technique. There's the one that you do, which was, you studied with uh, Dolores Cannon, but also with Henry. Somebody brought his name up. Yeah, Boldick. Henry Boldick from Australia. Yeah, Henry somebody Boldick. brought his name up in a con in, in a comment. Yeah. And he's an author of many books, and he he started at fourteen years old, and he was associated with the Edgar Casey uh, Association, you know, ARE. So um, he he was a very gentle soul. Yeah, he was, um, and I was picking up that he was what we call a disciple. A disciple, fantastic. So, but I want I want to help people understand that the way you do your sessions, you require people to be with you. That you require people to physically be it with you, and you have your reasons for that, and I think they're valid. Uh, that you know, if when you're regressing or somebody's going through this past life, it helps to have somebody physically there in case they need help. Now, there's another school of thought that says this can be done online. Um, and I'm just I'm just pointing out that there's two schools of thought here. The way Karen does it is you would have to go to Karen's 
place, which is north of, where's it at? North of Baltimore. Yeah. Baltimore. It's near okay. Pennsylvania line. Okay. So if you're on that side of the country or you want to fly there, she does these sessions and she's amazing. Um, but mm -hmm. if, but I'm sure you can find other practitioners by going online to the QHHT. What would you, where would they look for some, this type of thing? Well, they would look, look on Dolores Cannon's QHH uh, quantum healing hypnosis, you know, and they have a list of people. Um, but I would make sure, I personally think they need to have in-person training, but that's my personal feeling. Um, but that's what I recommend to people. Um, and past life training, all my past life people have since gone. So I, you know, now you could go to, I would recommend Brian Weiss's. I think he still has practitioners that work with, cause he's really good. So, um, you know, so, because I don't know everybody that does this work, you know, it's kind right, of right. To, to right. Know. I just wanted to give people the resources, and I wanted people to understand that there's two two camps. There's two mm -hmm. schools of thought. One school of thought offers it via like Zoom, and that's not Karen's school of thought. But I'm just telling you what I know. Um, and then and a was, question. Go ahead. Dolores Cannon recommended that we didn't do it. Though. Dolores Cannon never got on that school of thought. She, that was not, she never agreed to it uh, mm -hmm. while she was alive. Um, yes, while she was and alive. And Dippin' Dot says, what is the best way to prepare for a past life regression? First of all, be open and be willing to not judge the information. Because if you judge or analyze the information, you have difficulty sometimes going into hypnosis because you're too busy thinking this is, can't be real or this is I'm making this up or this or that, you know, whatever, you know, because you have some analytical people that really can't go into past life because they're so analytical. You know, I had one person analyzing what I call the induction deepening part. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Really? Was, wow! Yeah, she was very, very analytical. Wow! I said, "Well, you have to do this in order to get to hypnosis, <laughs> to get to the past life. You have to stop so, asking questions and analyzing it." <laughs> so I tell people we can analyze after the session, but not during the session. So, um, and I just say, be open to whatever happens, whatever possibility. And the people that are more open are just, you know, have a better time of it. Now, there are levels of hypnosis as well. You can be in a light kind of hypnosis, and then you can be out of it kind of, you know, not remember anything. Most people remember everything. Really? And you have to, oh, yeah, most people do. And so, or they remember parts of it. Now, in the subconscious not always they remember, but sometimes, most times they do remember parts or whatever. So I tell people just, you know, it just depends on you, where you want, how deep you want to go in, in that trance state. And to prepare, I would say, um, listen to some videos of guided imagery or something, you know, to get yourself relaxed and, and just, you know, if, that, if you think you might have difficulty. Or meditate too. Meditation will help you prepare a lot. That's a good point. If you're one of those people who tells me I can't meditate, then that's a good tip off that it's going to be hard for you, even with a professional like Karen, to relax enough to let go. And it is about letting go, right? Because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what we're going to experience. And so we want to, we want to kind of stay in control. But you don't have to, I mean, some people, a lot of people don't meditate that come to me. So, you know, but if you think you can't relax, then you need to do that. That's what I'm saying, the people that have difficulty. Um, and then, you know, some people will come in and say, I don't think I can go in hypnosis. And I'm like, you have, need to change the way you think about that. <laughs> you need to say, I will be successful. So you need to change that thought that, you know, I can't. Remember you said I can't go into it? So yeah. you need to change that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'm open to going. I want to go, you know, right. or if right. somebody tries too hard, you know, cause I can see them squinting their eyes. And 
Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they want to go so bad, you know. And oh, I'm like, no, that's terrible. So relax. <laughs> Oh so hopefully God. I do the relaxation. So most people relax. So that's nice. Um, so it's, it's really wonderful. So, oh. um, and uh, I want to tell people also, they get confused. You are aware of yourself, but you're also aware of that past life person. Do, did you do that when you went to the past life? Did you feel that you were that person, but you were aware of it, right? Yes. I was watching it. I, I was like in a movie because I'm very clever. I was watching it, but I was also the person. Yes, absolutely. I don't know and how to describe that, but I was both. Yeah. It's almost like your your conscious mind is over here and then, your, you know, the other part of your mind is the, the memory is coming through. So, um, yeah, because a lot of people think they're going to be totally knocked out. And that's very rare. It's not – I've had – maybe five people and I've been doing this 16 years that didn't remember anything in a past life. And wow. um, in fact, on 98 rock, um, I can say their names. Uh, a man came to me first and um, then he had his other friend come and he went into hypnosis and he had an experience and he came out and he said, I'm sorry, I fell asleep. And I'm like, no, you had a past life. And you also went to the spirit world and spoke with someone that you love that had crossed over. Wow. And he was in shock. <laughs> but because you had I, it recorded. Oh, yeah. It's on my wow. website, too, the whole recording. But um, it was a very sad lifetime. And most people do have sad lifetimes because that's where we have the trauma or the releasement. Um, and, um, so he understood why he went to that past life, but it was difficult for him because, you know, this was his first experience, but I think, I think spirit chose him because I got so many more men Yeah, from that, you know? Yeah. So now when I she says 98 rock, she's talking about a radio station, yeah. 98 rock in Baltimore. Yeah. Uh -huh. In Baltimore, uh, she, Karen was featured on their uh rock job show i mean these are guys you know making fun of each other for dying you know what i mean they're <laughs> they're like doing the whole male bonding thing and there's karen <laughs> you know she's <laughs> like oh my god what is happening here but she has the thing on her website so uh her website all her contact information is in the description of this video um, but also yeah. uh, Sharon Sipe has been putting it in the chat. So thank you, moderators. Yeah. So what are the odds that he would have come and not remember? No. And, and it really was it was not only sad, it was gripping. If you guys yeah. should go watch watch it from her website, it was a gripping account of what happened. And he's angry. You know, he's on the radio. They're talking about this stuff on the radio. And he's kind of trying to deal with, the emotions of, of his death. Um, and, um, and I think that I don't, you think without him even knowing in his conscious mind that this wound was here and it, it wanted to be released and yeah. he released it. Right. And he's he got to feel a thousand percent better, even though he didn't realize that there was a wound there. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I I never thought I'd be on 98 Rock. <laughs> the first I'm gentleman, Paul, Paul came and and then after the session, he says, "You're good. I'm, we're going to put this on 98 Rock." And I was like, "Are they really for this <laughs> on the radio?" He goes, "Oh yeah, they're all excited and everything." So um, they were very nice people, but it was kind of weird. They had all these microphones on you. You felt a little nervous there. You know, it was a little much. And, and they were yeah, popular. They, they were on each other. Yeah, yeah, they were sending barbs at each other. <laughs> yeah, you died on the wagon trail. I'm like, oh, my God, that's so rude. But, you know, they, they're just doing that main thing that they do. But, you know, um, I think they were testing me at first because he said oh, I think so had, too, yeah. we, we had psychics out there and they lived above the pizza place. And they were, <laughs> he's, he's going on. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Well, so, so I you're think probably they like, did. what have I done? <laughs> Why did I do this? Is it too late for me to run? <laughs> so after Justin stayed, uh, uh, one other person came, but then after that, the other guy didn't want to come. 
No, no. <laughs> he said he might have been the brother that left the child. <laughs> it could have been. It was pretty, it was, it was shocking. It was a yeah. shocking thing. But I'm telling you, it's like the way the spirit guides explained it to me. You get a splinter in your hand and it's deep and you're like, well, it'll just be there, you know? But then, you know, it starts wake, working its way to the top and then it gets irritating and it gets irritating you know, it, you, you want to get it out. So that's what happens is these things in our soul, they just want to come out. And Karen's there with the spiritual tweezers to pluck them out and go, yeah, that was a, that was a big one. You know what I mean? So how many past lives can be covered? I usually do two, unless my guides tell me to do more, <laughs> which has happened a few times. Um, Wow. I always uh, do two, but if also if someone has a short life, like very short, then I'll do three. Yeah. And she's been obsessed with Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Uh -huh, you were there. I just recently had some woman that was there and she was traumatized from that, um, you know, while she was experiencing it, but not later. We released all that. But um, she always felt she was in Pearl Harbor and she definitely was. And she talked about not knowing what was going on. They thought it was an earthquake at first. I mean, she went on and on. So just like she's there. I mean, because you are, you're re-experiencing it there from your perspective at the time, you know. And and I don't want to get into a, a I don't want to get into a judgment about what's right and what's wrong. I just want to say that. It is true in my opinion, because I've seen it and Karen has seen it. And Karen's done this how many years? Going on 17. 17 years. She's done this. And if you're having an experience where you're shaking and you're literally having a decompensation where potentially you, you know, you need to be brought out of it or uh, something happens. It's just it, it, the school of thought that someone should physically be with you. I kind of agree with that a little bit. What if it's on Zoom and Karen has a decompensation? What if she faints and then the person who's on the other end of Zoom is, you know, eventually I assume they're going to come out of it, right? But yeah, oh, um, they always do. Just yeah. not as, I just don't think it's as um, good. But I understand some people in the chat are saying it's, you know, Dolores Cannon was old school and we're in a new world. And I agree, we're in a new world. And you know what? For that reason, people do it both ways. You guys make your decision as to what way you want to do it. Um, uh, and that's my feeling. That's uh, that's your personal opinion, right? That's and that was, that, I like, that's why I told you guys, there's two camps. I'm not yeah. judging. I just want yeah. people to understand because I don't think people know that. There's two different camps. Okay. Yeah. Tony says, uh, when Jesus, J dog, when J dog comes and visits your sacred space regularly, does this mean you may have known this energy form in the past? So it, it appears that Jesus is sort of like a guide for her or a, a more constant energy that visits her. So our question is, do you think that could be that she was if around she feels, when Jesus was around? If she has that feeling, yeah, probably. But, you know, a lot of people can access Jesus. You don't have to have a lifetime with him, right? It is weird, though, that he's he's very close to me. Like, I, I didn't grow up with religion. So, you know, uh, it is weird, though, when you have more of a connection with him that you're not seeking but just happens. I think that either you did have a lifetime with him or, for some reason, in this lifetime, you're aligning with his energy or you're aligning with his message. Right. Well, we're all one because when um, someone asked if they could channel Jesus, one of the first ones, I, I asked, why, how is that possible? And he said, well, we're all one. Yeah. Right. So, Unconscious. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but if you have a strong connection, like as a child, I did, I would see this at church, this picture of Jesus with the cross, you know, and the blood and all this stuff. And his eyes would go up. It was really bizarre. It would freak me out. And I, I always said, always what was important was his words. That's what's important. That's how, what we need to go back to and listen about love, oneness, compassion, all the good things. Yeah. Yeah, the forgiveness. 
Mm, forgiveness. Yeah. Forgiveness is a big thing that um, people need to forgive everyone in this life because believe me, if you carry that from lifetime to lifetime, it's a very heavy, heavy, heavy load. The forgiveness? What? What is the load? The, what, the unforgiveness part of unforgiveness. It. Oh, the I'm unforgiveness. Yeah, the judgment or the persecution of others. Yes, exactly. And that's that. a big thing that I do of releasement. And that's a very powerful thing. I've only had one or two people who weren't able to forgive. They just couldn't forgive. And um, I tried my best, but... <laughs> Up to the so soul. they were in your session out like they were out now what part of them wouldn't forgive their higher self their subconscious i don't know they just that part of them just wouldn't forgive they're like no that's I why that's there. why maybe as in the soul state they weren't able to forgive and they're just holding on to it so um i tried my best but you know i'm not it's up to them it's the soul yeah but most people do. It's very rare. I had one, maybe one or two people in my whole. Thing. In all your whole career. That yeah. You and sometimes it's hard for them to forgive, you know. So, um, yeah, it's a very heavy burden. I feel like more often than not, we need to forgive ourselves. And even mm -hmm. not that we did anything, but sometimes we need to forgive ourselves that we didn't do anything or right. that we took it upon ourselves as children to think I must have caused that because I'm a bad little girl. And so we end up with this complex where we're blaming ourselves. So for forgiving yourself can be a huge release and a huge, you know, shot oh, to yeah. your vibration. Yeah. Sometimes it is harder for them to forgive yourself, you know, um, because of different things that they did in the past but they're able to forgive themselves finally because they've been forgiven a long time ago. So they need to let it go. That's the main thing. You need to let it go. Cause it's just, it's, it's really not important, especially when you cross over all the yeah. near death experiencers and all the people that I work with, it's all about love. Yeah. Self love, really. love for others, unconditional love. Yeah, and, and a lot of people that come to me, including myself when I was younger, have a lack of self-love for themselves. So um, that's a journey. But it's interesting, a lot of people that come don't love themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to do that. I don't know why we came with that as a group. I, I don't either. Uh, <laughs> I don't either. Um, wow. So uh, Bonnie says that she had QHHT session and a BQH session. What is the BQH session? I yeah, wonder. Never heard can, that. You, can you tell us what that is, Bonnie? Uh, both times she felt like she was making it up. Yeah, that's what it feels like. It feels like um, it's kind of sensational. It's kind of like, wow, you know, um, and it's so real. I tell people, if you think it's, you're making it up, how would it relate to your current life? Would you be that good at making up things? You know, I know that's what I tell people too. go ahead and we, right now and just make up a story. Go ahead. <laughs> and they can't do it. They're like, I can't do it. I'm like, exactly. Exactly. And wouldn't you want to be a queen or, you know, rich and yeah, famous? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You, you would Most you, people live ordinary lives. I mean, really. And I've had people that were famous that work. I mean, that, work for people that were famous, but um, of course, Jesus, I, you know, that's pretty famous, but I've had a few, but not, not too many. Yeah. I don't know why you're not remembering things. Uh, Hilda um, wonder why, when you have major surgeries, I completely go into the dark and don't remember anything yet. Others remember a lot. Uh, well, you're talking about a surgery, your hip, you know, you're, you're out, uh, yeah. you, you know, you're not, typically going to remember anything. I'm not sure if you mean surgeries. Um, Did she I think that's that? normal. I don't think that's not normal. Yeah. That's, that's normal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Mountain dancer. You had a question about um, if you have an obsession. Yes, we've answered this. Uh, maybe you weren't here. Uh, if you have an obsession with the Tudor dynasty. Yes, it does. If you have an obsession 
I mean, especially if you're going to use the word obsession. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, that's right. a strong indication. But even if you have a mild interest, a passing interest, it almost always means there's a link there. There's just no reason why you would be fascinated with World War II planes, right? Or right. Uh, fascinated with some part of history or a certain part of our world uh, geographically. There's, there's almost always a link to a past life. Yeah, I want to explain something. Um, a lot of times people will say um, they made it up because they always, they read this book or they saw this movie. And I said, well, you have to look at it differently. Why were you attracted to that book? First of all, why were you attracted to that movie? Right? And I wasn't. Okay. Yeah. Or that time frame, you know? So um, it's just like uh, the, what do you call it? The Gettysburg uh, people that do the reenactors, oh, you know, yeah. they definitely were there. I mean, why would they dress up? Would you do yeah. that? No, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> and it's a lot of money. It's oh, a lot yeah. of money to get those uniforms. And you know, they're like real. They're not, this isn't, this isn't Amazon Halloween costume. These things are real. They're cooking over those real fires. Yeah. It's real. It's a real reenactment. Yeah, you're right. They're, they're, they're literally reenacting something that they had a past life doing. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I think you answered this question um, or maybe we didn't. Julianne wants to know, how do you choose which lives to review? To review in the life review or she's talking about the past life experience, right? I think so. Yes. Uh -huh. The past life regression. How I, you choose it, you just the soul chooses it. <laughs> what I do is I take you, um, like a, it's called an induction, where I take you where you deepen to get there. And actually, I use the um, Dolores Cannons where you're on the cloud and you come off the cloud. And then I say, What are you sensing or feeling? And then you tell me. And then you're there. And whatever you experience, I don't ask you, You're at, you're in Egypt now. No, no. I said, yeah. what do you, what do you feel? You know, what's around you? You know, what, what type of shoes are you wearing? What type of clothing? You know, where do you live? Those kinds of questions. And you tell me, and some people just tell me, I don't even have to ask those questions. So um, another important thing to understand is that people um, in the past life experience sometimes see things like a movie i did you did too right do, some yeah, people I see, see pictures like movie, yeah. and some people do not see anything and that's where they get upset <laughs> what they do you mean when they don't see anything do they have a knowing that something happened yeah. or a feeling right. but they yeah. don't so see they have it. to go with their first impressions the knowing and the feeling where the uh they always want to see things everybody well, wants right. to see it like a movie i know yeah some people but it's in their mind's eye, you know, but they can just yeah. have as much information as some of them. Absolutely. Can see. So Absolutely. it's a very individual thing, but people get upset because they can't see, even though That's I explained true. to them in detail. It's true. You, you have true with psychic. When I'm teaching psychic classes, it's the same thing, but I'm not seeing, I'm like, because that's just not how you interact with the energy. You're right. feeling everything. Uh, somebody said recently, I did an exercise with somebody and I said, what color do you see around me? And she said, whatever color. And she said, wait a minute, I'm not seeing it. I'm like, really? How do you know what color? I know what color it is. So there it is. She knew yeah. the color without seeing the color. And she was able to do a whole color reading, even though she never saw the color, you guys. Right. So you have to just go with it. If, if yeah. you have to just let go it go. It. Let because it go. the more you do that, the more in depth you're going to go into that past life, the deeper you will go, the less of you will be there. And that other person, that part of you in that past life will be more dominant. Okay. So, so if you're um, asking questions, you're not going to go as deep. If you're going, wait a minute, why am I not seeing? You're going to, you're going to come back out. You're going to come back into your consciousness, your thinking mine. brain. Yeah. And you don't want to do that. You want, you don't want to ask questions. You just want to take the little magic carpet ride and take it wherever it goes. <laughs> and then <laughs> as far as like what soul, th uh, this is, I think it's dictated by your higher self or your spirit guides. They're like, Susan needs to learn this this time. 
right? They, they present it to you. Like yeah. you just described earlier. So people are coming on to this a little bit late, but she described earlier in the recording in this video, the slide video, that there were many times that you got regressed because, you know, like you were doing the training, sometimes you were, you know, the therapist and sometimes you were the patient, you know, and you had to switch back and forth and you couldn't get to that life. Yeah. It took you several times before you got to the life with, uh, that you were talking about with the, whether it was it with the water and the, um, yeah. And then public speaking. Yeah. The public speaking. I was judged. Yeah. People who were judged in a past life, um, you know, be before a judge, they think they're being judged all the time. You know, so that wasn't available to you. You had a lot of sessions before that became available to you to work on. Right. Yeah. But they didn't finish. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the problem. That's another yeah. problem. Yeah. yeah, that's another problem. Because hopefully most of the time, um, of course, you have to accept what what you released and able to. But it's interesting after they come out of the session, even past life, they're lighter. Yeah. They're it's a, it's a different oh, energy like a entirely. It's different. I don't know how to explain it. It's a just, soul heavy burden that you're carrying. And, and like, so the next question is, and we already covered this too. Yeah. ETs have past lives. I had a past life regression where there I am as an ET on a ship and y'all I'm doing the same pattern that I'm doing as Susan in this human life. And I'm like, for the love of God, why am I, you know? So yes, um, that it becomes a soul burden that's, that your soul is carrying from these lives and man, you just want to release it, right? You just want to be free. You want to be lighter. And that's what she's talking about. She's like, even their vitality looks better after they've released that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and people who have a lot of uh, releasement, just even more so, I think, you know, and the, and the, and the clients with Jesus had lights around them, bright lights, and oh my God, that's beautiful. I don't even see ours, but I saw it on them. Oh so. wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, you and I don't know how to pronounce your name, but I see you all the time. So thank you so much for for coming and supporting. And you studied with Dolores Cannon too. Um, and what's interesting is is that you saw these bright lights around these people, but they weren't like you know, like Dalai Lama, you know, weren't all these people just living like very normal, average, whatever lives? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a light within us and some people have a brighter light and they can just heal that way. Do you see what I'm saying? They're, like some people want to be healers and this, and I said, you can be a healer by your words, by caring for somebody or speaking or helping somebody or however kindness you show, even in the grocery store, you know, I always thank them and say, how was your day or something like that? Yeah. You know, or waitress. Cause I was a waitress. They, some people act like you're not even there. Right. Yes. So right. you have to, right. Yeah. You're showing up and being kind and gentle, but these yeah. people that you saw the brilliant lights around, they, that's what she's saying is they weren't, you know, healers, and they were just regular people that are living regular lives in this incarnation. And, and their light, their light is probably healing people around them, but it's not something I, I, I don't think they're overtly aware of it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Now, now some of them were uh, healers in this okay. life, but, and there was a few that were one, two, two psychics. Yeah. Two had psychic abilities. Two or three. I don't know. I can't. But there's remember. 20, there's over 30 of them that you. Well, yeah. And the, yeah, there were more, but I had to kind of put. <laughs> it was enough. I know. You 20. had to like, that's it. <laughs> it was enough for 24. I did have a woman that I told her that she was in the book and she, she agreed to it at one point. And she told me, I don't want to be in the book. And I'm like, oh, she really? came back and said she didn't want to be in the book. She didn't want. So I said, well, I'm not putting anything negative in the book. So no, but she was the only one that doubted the healing. Oh. And she, she, she was, she had a lot of healing to do. Oh. And I, after that session, I fell asleep. I was so exhausted. We're exhausted. Wow. Yeah. And, and I don't do that normally. So. Oh. 
and is isn't the one of the last ones the last case study if you will isn't it one of the roman soldiers yeah so you're saying that this person who was a roman soldier had a lot of light around them too i said not everybody i'm not going to say <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, never mind. Okay, but this person, imagine going and getting QHHT and then finding out that you were a Roman soldier that had something maybe to do with the fact that Jesus was on that cross. Yeah. That's and and but it was very it was in interesting if you notice he was torn. He was very yeah. torn. Yes. In the book, the he's end, torn. Well, this is not fiction, this is his own recounting. And uh, he had to f forgive himself, definitely. Yeah, and, and that uh, and that came up for him in this lifetime. To f that that he was ready. Maybe he did the soul work. Yeah. Wait, was this a man in this lifetime too? No, that was a woman. It was a woman in this lifetime. So maybe she did the soul work, and now she was ready to release that. Speaking of which, Rima Goldman says, "How do we forgive ourselves if we were a soldier who has killed others?" Not in my history, I think. Well, this is what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, because why why did you kill that person? What lesson did you learn? Or did somebody else learn a lesson? Um, we It's not always clear to us. But when we go in the spirit world, it's, it's made more clear. Or when we go to that higher level, it would be made clear. Um, so... I think most people have been soldiers before, and I've had many soldiers. Um, I also had some Nazis that um, they didn't really want to kill somebody, but they just followed, you know, they just followed what they were supposed to do. Um, most people who were in wars say they never want to do that again. Yeah, they don't want to have a lifetime where there's war. Um, so um, I've had murderers too, so, you know, so how did, so, so that's the thing. How does one square, you know, I want to just say square. How do I make sense of that? How do I, how do I say, well, you know, great. I was, you know, a serial killer in my past. Life. You know, how do I like, you know, really though, how do you, how do you heal? How do you square that with who you are today? Well, that's why you have to do the soul work because you have to understand why you, you did that and you're not to do that again. Or maybe you were sent to um, to heal or to understand. I don't know. There's so many scenarios, let's put it that way, of why things happen. Um, I've, I've found that out, you know, in my work that you can't say it's one thing. Do you understand? Because you, if you kill someone, maybe they had an agreement before they wanted to be killed. Oh for a reason God. they that's wanted true. to experience it because sometimes we just want to come and experience okay yeah, that's true or it's, maybe you wanted crazy, to murder somebody to know what that feels like and then so you don't do it again i don't you know i don't know so um it's up to the soul actually it's um and maybe they had some darkness there i don't know um and maybe they want to see the light now because um, I think most people have had things in past lives that they're not real proud of sometimes. I think so too. I think so too. And it's also like they're showing me you're an expert. If you can, if you can experience a life where maybe passion got the better of you and you killed someone, and then you come back the next life and you rise from that low vibrational pain and hurt and, and whatever is happening in your soul and you rise up out of that and become a pacifist, then that's expert soul. You, you've done an, a, an immense amount of work in that life. Now, if you come into the next life and you're angry and you're blaming other people for causing you to have to, you know, feel some kind of way, then you're not really doing the work. I mean, it's just an opportunity to do the work to, to, you know, you right. experience it all and release it all and love yourself through it. Right. Because sometimes we just come from that experience. Yeah. To know what it feels like to um, maybe do that. Uh, it's up to the soul, you know, 
and um, and there is no judgment. I mean, because we all survive. There is there is no thing called death. It's just a transition into another form. And I I would just say that too, just so that you guys know the um, the soul. You're not going to experience if you get a QHHT session. You're not going to experience something you're not ready to experience. I mean, again, this is very regimented. You know, it, even if you're ready to experience it, it's it's going to be a little bit of a, you know, uh, it's like working out, stretching. Your soul, soul is going to have to stretch to take that in and heal that. But you are capable of doing it. They're not going to give you more than you can handle. No, they never, they tell me that. And they also will say, if I, if they, one of their questions is, they'll say, they're not ready for this or humanity's not ready for this. I've had that happen too. Yeah. Or humanity's not ready for this. Woof. That's a big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I can kind of, I can kind of tell you a little bit about this alley. So why do dogs in crisis commercials hurt my stomach and heart so much? Um, I, I feel like it's because they're defenseless. Uh, animals are defenseless. And so there's a part of you that was defenseless. And you know what it's like to be defenseless with something bigger and meaner and angrier or whatever. And you're very vulnerable. Dogs and cats and animals are vulnerable. And it, it just triggers your vulnerability probably from a past life. What would you say about that, Al, about Ali's question? Well, that's, that's a good, yeah. And then I had one woman that was uh, similar to that um, and she loved animals in the past life so much. Um, so it might be a repeat of that, I don't know, but she just loved animals. And so she never wanted them to be hurt. And somebody was hurting them in a past life with her, I think too. Um, and uh, she had difficulty with that, but that was, that's just her soul sometimes. They, she's probably an empath, don't you think? Yeah, I, I think you're a huge empath, but mm -hmm. it feels like it triggers a wound as yeah. well. That, yeah. um, and and you know, it's the same thing we were talking about the judgment, the persecution. A lot of us were probably burned at the stake for being healers, forget witches, we were simply herbalists and healers. And, um, so we had we come into this life with this pre built in kind of, um, uh, trigger for the, those kinds of things, right? We carry that with us. Yeah. And we talked about it. Sometimes people have trouble understanding that they have psychic abilities. And I think that might be the reason too. It yeah. very much is. And They're, so we don't want to acknowledge it. Yeah. Would you say that's also, so we talked briefly about when you're getting your past life regression. So that's a lighter hypnosis. Is that what you would say? Then the quantum, oh yes, yes. And then the quantum is like the big deep. That's deep. when you have no personality because you still have a personality, right? You're still aware of what's going on in the past life. Yeah, yeah. unless the, you're unless you're like the the man that didn't remember anything, <laughs> right? Right. But that's that's rare. Um, so he was he was more susceptible to it, I guess, and more. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but I do think source chose him personally. That's my feeling because yeah. there were so many more men and people that might not have come. Cause a lot of people, this was their first introduction and you know, they said, Oh, well, I'm just open to anything. <laughs> and they went in. So they went in hypnosis. So yeah, all of them. I don't think anybody did not, which is interesting. That yeah. is interesting. Um, and, and Rima wants to know, can we release a past trauma if we have not learned the lesson from that past life? Um, it, how can you, you be aware, of, if you're aware of it? Um, I think so, but it might take more time. But I'm not sure. It depends on the person. Because I was able to release my fears, but I don't know about trauma. Tra you know, it depends on what trauma, too. I'm talking, you know, fears and phobias. Trauma, does she know what the trauma was? I don't know. She's a thinker, so she's probably just coming up with oh, all just the a general, uh, general analyses okay. of, but but it's interesting. It's an interesting question. Um, 
I like that you're picking up on the word trauma, which is a much deeper fear is one thing. Trauma is another thing. So that's an important distinction. Mm -hmm. Also, I would say there's an emphasis on learned here. In, in my opinion, sometimes we can release it just by acknowledging it. You know, yeah. learning can just be acknowledging, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then you can release it. So, yes. so learning doesn't have to be this big, audacious, bodacious thing that I had to learn. Sometimes it's very simply, okay. And like for me, one of my things that I went, surprise, surprise, is I went into, um, I thought I was graduating. I've told this story before. I thought I was graduating. I was standing in front of this door and I had Everybody was with me. All I know is like every soul I ever knew in my entire soul existence was with me. They were all celebrating me. I was like, this is awesome. You know, I'm going to graduate. This is the feeling I had. I'm going to graduate. I opened the door and there's my mother in the hospital bed. My mother died when I was seven. I never saw her in the hospital. All that came home was her purse. And so I opened the door and there's my mother in the hospital bed. And I'm like, great. This is not, this is not what I thought I was getting. So <laughs> I, I, I feel like somebody shoved me in the room, you know, like go, you know, so I go in there and I'm standing there and my mother and thank, and this is why you guys, you need a good facilitator because I was just like literally catatonic. I was catatonic. Like I couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. I couldn't think I didn't know what I, I was literally stunned. And now, having said that, I knew that I was getting, that love was radiating from her. Love was radiating from the bed, but I was still stunned. And the facilitator said, what do you see? And so I told her, I, this is what I see. And she says, and what do you feel? And I said, I feel love. So that's when my brain kicked in and I started processing what was happening. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, I'm okay. I can breathe, you know, I can do this. And then my mom handed me something and she said, what is happening? I said, my mom is handing me something. And she said, what is it? And I said, it's the sun. It was like a ball of light. And I said, it looks like the sun. And they, and they said, take it, take the gift. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, so, you know, literally. So, and then they said, take the gift and put it in your heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you doing that, just doing that, healed me. I didn't even know that I still had residual. This is decades later of a lot of therapy and every other thing, right? I had no idea that I still had anything there to heal. I had no idea. And it was the graduation. It was the last thing I needed to do. So you never know what you're going to get, but your soul can handle it. And if you have a good facilitator, that's very important. Then, then they can facilitate you getting what you need to get and keep you safe. If you feel unsafe, they can, they can back you out of the situation. You know, they're, they're just there to help you. They're, they're a facilitator. So it's really important. Yeah. That's important to say too, because um, like if someone has a really adverse reaction to something happening in a past life, I take them out of that and go back to a happier time or another time. And then we come back to that and they can handle it better. So that makes sense to me. What so that's said. an important thing about the facilitator. Yeah. Now, Karen and I both have had past life regressions. Now, not QHHT, but just past life regressions where we've been hypnotized, where we, it was like a self-guided tour. <laughs> we, we just was like, okay, this is what we're seeing. Okay, great. Now you're back out. And nobody facilitated it. Nobody helped us heal it. We, we now we're just consciously aware of the pattern and we don't know what to do with it. Right. So it's really important that you find somebody that you trust, find somebody that's a good, that's going to facilitate, that's really going to help you. If you end up in a situation where you're feeling too stressed out, they can help you get out of that and take you back to a place where you feel better. And you need to feel safe with the therapist. That's very important. Yeah. yeah, I always ask people if they feel safe. Um, and I also learned that some people are not ready to heal and they blame it on you. <laughs> so, 
And I've learned your mileage, your mileage may vary. Uh, well, <laughs> what you're talking about is right. I think you please tell me, but you're saying that here, Karen is spending an hour and a half trying to get this person to go under, to try to get them to relax and trying to get them to let go. And they never can. Uh, that's right. The, is that what you're saying? That to was, me, that's in the subconscious. Well, sometimes in a past life. Yeah. It's, it's, um, and then usually it's a blockage and some people will tell me that they know they're blocking or they had a bad day or something, you know, or something happened where they couldn't just let go or whatever, or they're too analytical, you know. Um, now in the subconscious, um, sometimes, you know, I'll try like an hour and a half and different ways to get them into that. But then it's, I don't want them to feel so frustrated too, because at one point they do, and then that's when you need to end it, kind of. Um, but um, because, you know, you want them to, I want everybody to get their answers, but that's not up to me. You know, that's up to you. The person. Right. You're the facilitator. Once again, right. you're just a facilitator. The soul mm -hmm. and the human have to sort of do their dance and figure right. it out. Right. That's great, Flora, that you healed some, you had a fear for 61 years that was totally released through a past life regression session. It, mm -hmm. it is amazing. If you can, if, if everything, you know, the stars align, it, it's, it's amazing. And I just want to say I'm super analytical and I'm an overthinker and I've trained myself to release that so that I can be hypnotized. Okay. So even though you're an analytical person and you're like thinking, well, I'm never going to be able to do that. You really can work on it. You're going to have to work on it. And Karen gave some tips, try meditating more, try listening to guided meditations, try, uh, try different things like staring at a candle flame, even a video of a candle flame, try putting headphones on and listening to binaural beats. There might be, you might need to just dial in the right things that you know can get you to release but then once you start releasing then you're going to have better i think better success with something like a qhht but you know it's a it's a great minority that doesn't go into hypnosis um you know i'd say like five percent five percent okay maybe two two to five i guess not many um so most people do go, you know, now some people have a lighter a hypnosis, um, you know, where they're in hypnosis at a lighter stage or whatever. Oh, right. And yeah. they might feel that they made it up more than someone that would go deeper, but you can't make it up. I tell people, um, cause our, our mind is, is like a computer. We have all those memories, you know, and that's why we have, phobias from past lives because it's in there, <laughs> right. a big computer, right. right? So, yeah. Right. I, I have to ask this question. This is a crazy question in the chat, but before I get there, do you start a past life at the point of death? No. Do you start a past life at the point of death? No. 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 Mm -hmm. But some people will go there when I ask them what is happening. So then I take them out of that and then I go back because we have to find out what happened before. Did you have a happy life before that? You know, who were you with? Did you love this person? Uh, because, you know, we come together as a soul group sometimes. Does that make sense to everybody? And so we come together. So your mother might be your father or your husband, whatever. You know, we change roles. And so, you know, that person might be influencing the past life in your current life. So we have to look at that. So there's other things we have to look at. Um, so I don't, you know, even if they go there, I, I have no control if they go to that event first, but then I'll take them back. And so let's move back to a happier time, you know, and okay. then we go so back there at the end of what happened during that life. Okay. And the circumstances of their death too. See, that's why you need a, a seasoned person who knows how to navigate. You know what I mean? Like, okay, here we are, but we're going to gently move you to this other place. And then maybe we'll go back there. So that's very yeah. important. Um, and it's, it's, it's not as traumatic. It's not as traumatic. It's not as traumatic for them. Right. Yeah. Right. 
Right. Exactly. I mean, that that's what I'm saying. You don't want to just end up in the middle of a battlefield, right? You don't want to like your first thing is I'm in the middle of some traumatic thing. Uh, you may, but that's what a good facilitator can help you find a, a, a more gentle way to experience mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Okay, so this next question, just take a deep breath, Karen, because uh, it's a wild one. Uh, okay, when for a past life regression and the hypnotist said that she may have murdered me in a past life in Paris, <laughs> needless to say, there was no further progress. Oh my God, I knew I knew this was going to take Karen just clear out. I'm like, this is, I don't even know how she's going to react to this. I'm not sure. Uh, but why wow. I, I have never heard of this before. No, me either. I have to tell you a funny story. I had <laughs> I had We're this not laughing at you, Christy. I'm sorry about this, this situation. I had this gentleman <laughs> that um this was years ago, I was much younger, and so he, he said that he him and I were lovers in the past life. She can barely <laughs> say it out loud. <laughs> wait, wait. And I just let's, said, well, let's just go in a past life now. Because this I was even questions. before the past life. I have questions. Wait, was he in, uh, was he under hypnosis? No, he said no, that? he's just. No, he was. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get a new girlfriend. <laughs> So I don't know what this is. Okay, what if has a hypnosis? She was murdered. Uh, maybe was she psychic? Or did she have psychic abilities? I don't know. It's a possibility, but I don't know. Oh my God, why would you even? Why tell would you even say that? that to that person? Exactly. Anyway? It's not I relevant. Mean, you know, I mean, it, I mean, I don't no, know. No, because you have to be clear. You can't put your stuff on another person. No, no, no. Uh, -uh. she must not. I don't even know what sorry. to say to that, Christy. I'm so sorry that that happened. Yeah, that's uh, see, that's why I say it's very important to to connect with that past life therapist. Maybe if you call them, a lot of times people don't even call me. Sometimes people want to talk to me. If you if you feel you connect with them, or if you don't. Even in the session, I wouldn't charge you if you say I'm not connecting to you. You know, I wouldn't charge you. I'd say, okay, I bless you and be on your journey, whatever. <laughs> but um, so, but no, you don't put your stuff on the person. No, I don't understand that. I would never do that. Even if I felt it, but I never felt I murdered anybody really. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I did. I, I just imagine, uh, like, yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know what's that. You know, unfortunately, some people have had bad experiences that, that tell me things too. So that's why it's very important to find out that they were trained properly. Let's yeah. put it that way. And have a mature, have maturity. And and Kevin is right. This is this is the most important life. But I right. feel like that's why these things are coming up is because in this life, the soul wants to release, you know, like me with my mom, right? I was ready. I had done all the work and now I was ready to graduate. Um, and, you know, it is true. This is the most important life right here. But those things influence this life. And if we can unburden mm -hmm. our soul, then, wow, every our whole life is brighter. We're brighter. Well, I tell them that, actually, I say that, remember, this is the most important life because of the one you are experiencing at this time. But I know that it has helped me tremendously in my life. And that's why I do this work, because it is healing. And I see people being healed. And I see them being lighter. And, and they get back with me and tell me how they've healed, you know, and how it's helped them and changed their life. I've had people say, you changed my life. And I'm like, no, you changed your life by by healing yourself, you know, because we can all heal ourselves. But sometimes it's easier to have someone with us to do that. Yeah. There's all I, types I'm, of healing, you know. I'm done with the self-guided tour. I want professionals from here on out. This is, you know what I mean? But, but yeah. you know, some people are do-it-yourselfers. So you guys do you. 
I, Maggie, I have questions here about your comment. I always knew if I died young, it was going to be because I was hit by a train. Paranoid fear of trains. Makes sense. I was hit by a train, survived. Now I don't like trains, but the fear is gone. Are you telling me you were really hit by a train? By a train? And you yeah. I mean, are you really, is that what you meant to say? Is that what you're saying to me? Because that is just in, in. Yeah, uh, that's uh, interesting, isn't it? That's tremendous. Um, well, let me know if that's what you're saying. But yeah, so of course, um, you don't, the fear is gone. Like you survived, you conquered the fear. That's what they're yeah. saying. You conquered the fear. It's like when people are afraid of spiders and you go and put spiders in your hand until you're like, oh, it didn't kill me. Uh, yeah. But that's a pretty hardcore way to get over a fear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't suggest this at home. I don't suggest people do this. Uh, no. Yeah, this no, is like either. really hard. It's an easier so. way. Yeah. There's got to be an easier way. <laughs> QHHT would be easier. Uh, yes, in a car with your, oh my God, I cannot believe this. Oh this my is, God. This is like giving me a heart attack. You were in oh. the car with your hubby and two car, two kids in car seats. Wow. God bless you. I'm so happy you're okay. Yeah. That's. And now That's you have no fear of it. That is okay. We think you you think you survived because you were on your way to church. Wow. I think you survived because this was your lesson to survive. Yeah, this was right. this was pre-planned. And and I would have a word with my higher self when I got back up there. Be like, <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> now you tell me. <laughs> she says, now you tell me. Okay, you can you can believe that it was because you were on your way to church. I don't know. Who who knows? I don't know. <laughs> But, um, but clearly you've released that fear, right? You, you've, you've literally faced, I mean, that gives a brand new meaning to the word face the fear. Um, mm -hmm. yes, definitely. I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad your family's okay. But that, that feels, I mean, what do you think about that? Doesn't that feel ordained or somehow it's just too. That's on good. The nose? I've never heard that before. Yeah. That's well, I guess, answer. you know, like people are fearful of water and, and people throw them in the water and then they get rid of the fear. So maybe it's the same, but a train, that's really, that's kind of a lot. The hard way. Yeah, Maggie, yeah. the hard way. Um, God, you're, and, and I'll say that's also, that's, that is God sent. I mean, that is your, that, that a hundred percent was God was a God deal. I call these things a God deal. You know, like that's a God deal. That's something that's above our pay grade. Um, so, mm -hmm. wow. Thank you for sharing that. That's um, incredible. So it would be interesting, Maggie, to have a past life, if you ever wanted to, to have a past life regression with someone that, that was a facilitator that could facilitate you all the way through to the healing or the completion where you felt good, uh, it might be interesting to see what those, what your past life is around those trains, right? It, I, I feel like there's more information for you. I don't know that you're going to do this right now, but maybe even in the next 10 years, you may find that you're drawn to that, that there's another sense of completion there somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, I think you're either drawn to it or you're not. And it, you don't have to experience a past life. Um, True. You know, I think it's helpful. I, you know, I've seen it heal many, many people, including myself. So, um, but you know, there's other methods, I guess. Yeah. And, and you can heal yourself. So, if you believe that, then you can. Yeah. That's the self-guided tour. Mm -hmm. You can do it yourself. D DIY. Oh my right. gosh. Okay, guys. I think we're gonna have to wrap. We've been on for an hour and a half. Uh, it, it feels like it's just flown by. I hope mm -hmm. you guys enjoyed this with Karen Willis. Her information is in the bottom. It's in the description. She wrote this book, um, which I really enjoy. And I love it too, because you can just start anywhere in the book and read, you know, you don't have to read it cover to cover. You can start with this person's rendition of their session with her so you you know it's one of these things that you can just pick it up and read it anywhere throughout the book but uh it is a fascinating book you can get it on amazon 
I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's the awakened memories of the soul, 24 past life memories with Jesus. It's hefty. <laughs> <laughs> but you can buy it on Kindle too. Oh, you can get it on Kindle. Yeah. So, uh -huh. right. That's right. Thank you for reminding me. That's right. Yeah. If you don't, but a lot of people like, I like to hold books when I read them, especially spiritual books. I like to have them, you know. Well, I'm telling you guys, I don't know. Y'all tell me, but I'm telling you, there's energy in this book. I know this was printed. I know it's a physical thing, uh, but there's, there, there's energy. It, it, it emanates energy. I think it's all of the, recountings of of jesus's words and jesus's works and i'm not a religious person you guys i'm not but jesus was an ascended master he wasn't uh going to be a tool of of any religion or church uh that's kind of i think the reason why he why what befell him befell him right um so this just has really good energy um i was told to write the book too because i never yeah, thought he was you were yeah, told. I was, I was, yeah, told many and times. And all these people showed up that kept every person she was regressing, every third person had a life with Jesus. And she's like, what's going on here? You know what I mean? <laughs> because that's not common to have commonalities like that. No, it's very rare that a past life therapist has a particular person in a particular uh, circumstance, you know, because I've had maybe three or four in uh, Gettysburg, you know, that died in Gettysburg or fought and not everybody died too. And they didn't have the same experiences and didn't know the same people. So, you know, it's very rare. And that's why I was so like, what's going on here? But I think because I had personally had a lifetime with Jesus, I think they were drawn to my energy and, um, you know, so, and I've met people that said they've been, had lifetimes with Jesus since then too since the book came out so i don't know yeah and he had a lot of lifetime listen this guy went all around asia he went he went he met a lot of people so when we say lifetime with jesus we're not necessarily talking about in a scene or uh you know one of the disciples we're talking about people that could have been in a village that met him uh, a child that he healed or uh any number of people right that could in any walk of life so it's, it's he, touched, he touched many people yeah, so i'm sure there's people. other people on earth now that have been with him in various ways just like there's different circumstances but they're all kind of cohesive in their feelings of his uh, energy and his love and that he was he was a great teacher right future. so yeah. i i do want to say that that so because this is literally what the people were saying as at, in their regression this is what they were saying some people uh disagree like this person says jesus did this this person said jesus did that she literally left it all in there so it's you know it's their perspective of jesus so it's it's also something that you need to understand that people say well i don't understand why this person said this and this person said that well how many of us have pers different perspectives right of the same person i think this person is generous well i don't think they're generous right so it it's fascinating too that you get to see all these people their different perspectives of jesus even depending on when they knew jesus as a child, as an adult, um, you know, it's, it's fascinating. It's just a fascinating. Yeah. Uh, Cause I tell in the book, I said, this is their perspective at the time. Um, and I know sometimes in past life, the conscious mind can come in. So, you know, I don't know, but I think the teachings are all the same and I have at the end, the similarities and they're much more than the differences. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, for sure. The similarities yeah. are much more than the differences. There's just a yeah. few people that, um, and there's aliens in here. Uh, there's, uh, <laughs> you name it, it's in here. This is not this, you know. Yeah. And the channeling is, part. Yeah. Well, you can see so, all of my, all of my tabs here. I'm like, you know, so anyway, <laughs> I upgraded from paper towel markers to actually had to go buy tabs to put in this book. So anyway, I'm going to stop talking about it. It's yeah. The bells are, aren't they your bells? Is it like a clock that you have, Karen? We are yeah, hearing I have bells. a clock. I have anti-clock. It's, clock. Like it's a clock, you guys. It's, it's not Jesus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
But, you know, who knows? Maybe it is Jesus. I don't know. Uh, thanks, you guys, here, for sure. joining us. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, take really, really good care of yourselves. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll see you again real soon. Okay. okay. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Have a great day.